हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू आवर चैनल स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक इन क्लास ट्वेल्थ फिजिक्स चैप्टर वन इलेक्ट्रिक चार्जेस एंड फील्ड्स एंड दिस टॉपिक इज गॉस लॉ सो व्हाट इट सेज इट स्टेट्स दैट द टोटल इलेक्ट्रिक फ्लक्स कमिंग आउट ऑफ और गोइंग इन अ क्लोज सर्फेस इज वन अपॉन एपसाइल नॉट टाइम्स द टोटल चार्ज इन द सर्फेस ओके वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस स्टेटमेंट what is the meaning of electric flux suppose it is a closed surface on this 2d board i cannot show you three dimensional figures so you just have to imagine that it is it is not a line it is not a curve it is a surface right it is a closed surface and suppose this surface is enclosing a charge q anywhere in the surface right not not uh, at the center necessarily at the center but anywhere right so we know that electric field lines emerge out from a positive charge let us say that this charge is positive so the electric field lines will come out of this charge like this there will be numerous electric field lines infinite almost infinite number of electric field lines but i am drawing just few of them right so these are the electric field lines which are coming out of this charge and number of electric field lines passing normally through a surface that is called the electric flux so it says that the total electric flux coming out or going into the surface if this charge was negative then these electric field lines will go into the surface but right now we have we have assumed that this charge is positive so the electric field lines are coming out of this surface so if the electric field lines are coming out of this surface so the number of electric field lines that is the total flux which is coming out of the surface depends only on the charge enclosed by the surface and it does not depend the flux does not depend on any other factor not on the shape of the surface not on the size of the surface and not on any other factor the electric flux coming out or going into a closed surface surface depends only on the charge enclosed by the surface and this is very obvi obvious because number of electric field lines they start from the charge and they go away from the charge if the charge is positive and they do not stop somewhere abruptly they are continuous if it is starting from here it will go till it reaches infinity and infinity is not a point so it is not going to stop anywhere it is not uh, going to you are not going to find any region where you will see that there is no electric field line present of this charge the electric field lines are always continuous so if you draw a surface of any other shape if you draw a surface of any other shape or size like this one or like this one this this is a diff this this one has a different shape or a this one all these are surfaces right the closed surfaces not the not the curves or lines right all these are closed surfaces but if if suppose number of electric field lines which are passing through the smaller surface number of electric field lines which are passing through smaller surface 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so if 10 electric field lines passing through this surface then 10 electric field lines will pass through this surface and 10 electric field lines will pass through this surface and 10 electric field lines will pass through any other surface which is enclosing this charge because electric field line is not going to stop anywhere right so in other words we can say the total electric flux which is passing through this surface or this surface or this surface is always same so the total electric flux depends only on the charge enclosed by the surface and not on any other factor right okay what is this so electric what is the formula for electric flux if there is an area a and the area vector is a and electric field in which this area is kept then the total electric flux then the total electric flux through the area suppose this is an area you all must have studied the formula of electric flux if this is an area then what is the direction of this area vector area vector is always perpendicular to the surface area 
and it is kept in this electric field which is going like this electric field lines are going like this such that this angle which is the angle between this electric field E and area vector A this angle this angle is nothing but theta so what is the formula for electric flux the formula for electric flux is E dot A right okay now if we take any surface let's say the last one if we take any surface and divide this surface into very small areas of value ds right and the uh, the value of e here is suppose in this direction so for this small surface for this small surface what is electric flux for this small surface electric flux is simply e dot ds right ds is the area of this very small part and the direction of this area is this and E is electric field at this point which is in this direction. So this is the angle between E and DS. So what is electric flux for this small part? It is E dot DS. So what will be the electric flux for the total surface? That will be the integral of E dot DS. Right? You all know that what is the meaning of integration when we are adding up the all, all the fluxes. If that is a term. If we are adding up the flux of all these small areas so we have to what we have to integrate all the dot products of e and ds and when we do integration of closed surfaces we put this sign we put a circle on the sign of integration so it is saying it is saying simply it is equal to the flux the total electric flux which is coming out of this surface so that is equal to Q by epsilon naught. Epsilon naught is electrical permittivity whose value is 8.85 into 10 raise power minus 12, which is a constant. So Q depends only on Q depends only on the value of the enclosed charge. If if here the medium, some medium is present, then you have to put the electrical permittivity value of that medium. We have assumed that free space is present here so we have put epsilon naught which is the electrical permittivity of free space right okay now let us take an example uh, here we have three charges here we have three charges one is q1 and one is suppose minus q2 and this is the third charge q3 and here we have uh, an area of any shape this is this is a closed area right a closed area of any shape enclosing charges q1 and minus q2 so for this area if we apply gauss theorem then at every point we if we take a small area ds and electric field here there is e suppose this is the point here electric field is say in this direction and area vector of this is obviously this so the dot product of e and ds is this now if we integrate then we get the total electric flux and this should this should be equal to the charge enclosed by the surface which is q1 plus minus q2 divided by epsilon naught right there is no role of Q3 because Q3 is not being enclosed by this surface. We have to take on the right hand side of this equation. We only have to take those charges which are enclosed by this surface. And those charges are Q1 and minus Q2 only. Right? Okay. <clears throat> Using this equation, we can find the value of E. How we are going to find the value of E? Gauss law is basically used in symmetric situations. Like when the shape of this surface is such that the value of E at every point is known and angle between E and DS at every point is either 0 degree or 90 degree. So that we can calculate E dot DS for each and every point or the integral of E dot DS easily. In that case, we will use Gauss law and we will find the value of E. We are going to see this in uh, applications of Gauss law topic. But right now, we are going to prove this law. But before that, just understand 
that this Q is only the enclosed charge, but but this E is due to due to all the charges due to all the charges. Why is this happening? What we are saying? We are saying that if we are finding electric field at this point using Gauss law. So on the right hand side of the equation, we will just put Q1 and minus Q2 because those are the charges which are enclosed by this surface. But this E will not be due to Q1 and Q2 only. This E will be due to Q3 also. So why we are not including this Q3 in the equation? Because if a charge is lying outside the surface, the total electric flux of that charge will be zero, right? Because the electric field line, which is the electric field line of Q3, which is entering this surface will definitely leave the surface, right? This electric field line is entering at this point and leaving at this point. And suppose there is another electric field line and this will leave at this point. And there is another electric field line which is not entering the surface. So the electric field line which is entering the surface is bound to leave the surface. So when the electric field line is entering the surface, we take flux as negative and when it is leaving the surface, we take flux as positive. So that the electric flux, the total electric flux of Q3 for this surface is zero because negative flux is equal to positive flux. So we don't have to include this Q3 in this equation. Okay. Now let's prove this law using using Coulomb's law. We are going to prove this using Coulomb's law. We are going to prove Gauss law using Coulomb's law. Okay. Let us say there is a charge Q and let us assume an imaginary surface around this charge. Whenever we are to apply the Gauss law, we have to assume an imaginary surface for which we will, we will make the equation and apply Gauss theorem and that imaginary surface is called Gaussian surface. That imaginary surface, this surface or or, or this surface or these surfaces, all these surfaces are what? These surfaces are called, these imaginary surfaces which are used to make the equation for Gauss law. These imaginary surfaces are called Gaussian surfaces. Gaussian surface. Take We have to make a Gaussian surface or we have to assume or visualize a Gaussian surface such that the value of E at every point on the Gaussian surface, we will, we will see the details of Gaussian surface in a separate video, but we do not need those de details here. Just, just listen to this, what I'm saying that we are assuming a Gaussian surface in such a way that the value of E at every point is clearly known and that angle between E and DS at every point is defined, it is either 0 degree or 90 degree. So we can easily find this integral. For example, this is a point charge Q and at a distance R from this point charge, we have assumed a spherical Gaussian surface, right? And we all know that electric field at a distance R due to a charge Q by Coulomb's law, we know that electric field at a distance R due to a charge Q is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught Q divided by R square, right? Now, if we take small areas at any point on this surface, this, this is our DS, this is our DS, this is the DS. At any point, if we take these areas, then the direction of DS is always in this way because area vector is always perpendicular to the surface right area vector is always perpendicular to the surface and what is the direction of e 
since it is a positive charge so electric field lines are coming out of this charge so at any point the direction of electric field is like this such that the angle between e and ds at every point angle between e and ds at every point is same right so value of e at every point on the gaussian surface is same angle between e and ds at every point is 0 degree so this is an ideal situation to use gauss law so <clears throat> but we are not using gauss law we are going to prove gauss law for this situation but first we have to find the integral of e dot ds and for this this situation this type of situation should be there e is clearly defined angle between e and ds is clearly defined shape of the surface is symmetrical so we can find the integral of ds easily so because we are proving gauss law we are not going to put e dot ds equal to q by epsilon naught we will start with e dot ds and we will arrive at q by epsilon naught so angle between e and ds at every point is 0 degree so this e dot ds is simply e ds cos 0 degree and cos 0 is 1 cos 0 is 1 so we are left with this and since e is constant at every point at every point on this gaussian surface the value of e is this so e will come outside the integral sign and now if we put this value of e at this point 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q by r square ds okay what is what is the integral of ds what will be the value of the integral of ds when when you integrate ds that means you are adding the areas of all these small area vectors which will give you the area of this entire sphere and the radius of this sphere is r so what will be its area its area is 4 pi r square its area is 4 pi r square now 4 pi 4 pi cancel ho gaya r square r square also got cancelled so what is left q by epsilon not is left q by epsilon not is left which is gauss theorem so e dot ds equal to q divided by epsilon not so this was everything about gauss theorem statement proof and explanation so it is a very 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 important topic you have to prepare it very carefully i'll meet you in the next lecture till then all the very best